Hey, my name is Margaret Wong, and I'm a practicing immigration lawyer. Today, we are going to talk about why do I want to become a citizen. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the reasons as to why it's beneficial to become a U.S. citizen. So here we have a question that says, I have my green card already. Is there a benefit in me becoming an American citizen? There was a time in the U.S. United States of America history, it really is not that much benefit except you want to vote, you want the rights of a citizen because green card pays the same amount of tax as a U.S. citizen, green card travels, citizen travel. But as years go on in the past 20 years, I think now it's extremely important to become an American citizen. Let me give you an example. So for example, if it's a real case, I work far too long, I get very depressed, so depression and mental illness is really a ground for denial of citizenship. Another example, if I have a criminal record, I have three or four DUIs, it also could be or could not be a ground for not becoming a citizen. Because once you become a citizen, you, you are out of reach of Department of Homeland Security. So why do I want to become a citizen? Because aside from you have a right to vote, American citizenship, you are an American, and we should be proud of it, you know? But aside from that, they cannot take away your green card and you're out of jurisdiction of the Department of Homeland Security, which started in February of 2002 under President Bush. So here it says, how do I become a U.S. citizen? Any requirements? Yes. There's two forms. If you are under 18, you do the N-600 to get that certificate of citizenship, and that's our next question. If you're over 18, you do the N-400. So I'm a naturalized citizen. So the form I use is what we call the N-400. The, all the instructions are on the USCIS.gov website. Mm -hmm. The most important requirements are you don't, you should not have any criminal records. The question on the N-400 is, were you ever arrested, indicted, or c admitted to committed an illegal act, or pled guilty to, or convicted of? So all the answers are, are, so even if you have a traffic ticket, you're underlying cited, and then you have traffic tickets. That's a very important question. The next important question on the form is, were you ever a member of um, any clubs, groups, political parties, put everything down. If you belong to your church, put it down. If you belong to a mosque, put it down. If you belong to a temple, put it down. Because after a while, so for example, some organizations 20 years ago, it's a legitimate organization represent, uh, recognized by American Immigration Office, now it's Homeland Security. But through the years, because of the revolution, the social uprising in the Arabic world, you don't want not to put it down. And later on, they take away your citizenship because they think we have lied. So my advice is everything. So I'm a lawyer. I belong to the Sixth Circuit. I belong to the Cleveland Bar. I belong to the Ohio Bar. I belong to the Michigan Bar. I belong to all these bars. Put it all down, you see? Because then one day they cannot say I lied on that. And any and now the it is a gray area when you contribute to charities. Do you put it down like Red Cross? So my advice is put everything down, even though you contribute. Because one day you don't want them to come back and say you have contributed to a terrorist organization. You did not. I know it sounds really silly, but put it down because then they cannot come back and haunt you. So next question is, once I become a U.S. citizen, what else do I need to do? Congratulations. Now you make the journey. It took me more than eight years to get my green card after I finished my law school. And then another five years, you can apply for citizenship four years and nine months and one day after you got the green card and they became a citizen. So nowadays, um, actually the city of Cleveland, Ohio, is voted and Ohio State is voted one of the top citizenship state and city in the country. I'm really proud of that because we all live here in Ohio in in Cleveland. So that means that we get citizenship between three and a half months to four to five months. 
In New York now, in some of the cities like Atlanta, it's taking nine months to about one year and three months. In New York, it's taking one and a half to two years. So it depends on when. But um, basically, once you become a citizen, you're done. You're out of Department of Homeland Security jurisdiction unless you committed a terrorist act or something. But you're no longer under immigration control. That's number one. Number two is on the four, first four questions on the N-400, they also ask, do you need a name change? That's the fourth question. So first is the question of what's your name, what's your green card name, what other name do you, have to you, you use? For example, you use a maiden name and now you're married, you use your married name. Latino people have four names, so you have to put all those names on there. And the last question is what name do you want to change to? So for example, I'm Wong Wei. Now I want to be known as Margaret Wong. So on my that question, I'll say Margaret Wong, all right? Or Margaret W. Wong or Margaret Wei Wong. So um, that's the citizen name. So once you became, you got the citizen papers, my, my first advice to you is don't travel overseas unless you get a U.S. passport. It takes about two or three weeks to get a U.S. passport, sometimes three months, depends on the how busy it is from the U.S. Department of State. Passports are controlled by U.S. Department of State. Citizenship, the granting of citizenship is controlled by CIS under the Homeland Security Department. So USCIS.gov is a branch of the U.S. DHS, Homeland Security, all right? So I have, especially Canadians, uh, Latino people, it's so close, they spend $300 in round trip ticket back to Canada, back to Mexico. Don't do that because once you're an American citizen, you have to travel with your American passport. You cannot travel with your Mexican passport or your, or your Canadian passport until you get the passport. That's very important, otherwise you're stuck over there, you cannot come back because you're in the gray area. That's very important. So it says here, back on the topic of citizenship, do my children under 18 automatically become U.S. citizens? If I do, uh, what do I need to do? Nothing is automatic under our American society now. Nothing is automatic. America doesn't give you a privilege or right until you apply for it. And it's very expensive now. Years ago, to become a citizen is like $25, $35. Now it's like, I don't know, 735 or 780 to do the citizen. So if you're under 18, and that's a U.S. Uh, citizen law that just came in in year 2000, 2002. If only one parent is a citizen, you are a citizen, but you have to apply on the N-600 under the age of 18. If you're over 18, they won't give you a certificate, but you can apply for U.S. passport. Another thing is once you come in to America with a, with a green card, the second day you are American citizen, but you still have to apply for it and get the N-600 and get a certificate and apply for a passport. Even though you are, because you are, because your parents are citizen, but because they didn't fulfill the five and seven requirements on five out of the age of 14, that's a lot of requirements if the parents are citizen. But once you came to America as a green card holder, the second day you are, but you have to apply for it. There are different forms that apply for different things. So here, our next question is, how soon or, I can, or how can I sponsor a family member after I become a U.S. citizen? One day after you become a citizen, you will get the citizen certificate on the day that you're sworn in as a right hand, sworn in as a citizen. So that afternoon, once you get the certificate, you can sponsor your spouse your, and your parents and your children. If you sponsor your spouse, it's an immediate relative. If you sponsor your parents, it's immediate relative, they have no quota requirements. If you sponsor your child under 21, no quota. So hurry up and do it. If the child leave, left America before the age of 18 or never came to America before, before the age of 18, it takes only nine months for that child to come. But if the child is under 21 and you're a citizen, you can still sponsor him. But if he is undocumented in America, then you need to do a 601A waiver. So now, but the way to do that case would be you want to sponsor him or her before you became a citizen, when you still have a green card, remember I told you earlier, you could get a green card if you are married to a USC spouse in three years or a green card 
after five years or for on any other ground. So you could and should and could sponsor the spouse and child before you became a citizen. So when you become a citizen, you just have to upgrade a family to a case into a citizen, which is a fam, which is immediate relative. Unless the kid in the meantime became 21 is not protected under CSPA, then you upgraded to family one. That's when you, you probably need a lawyer on that. A CSPA case is another issue that's difficult. So these are all issues, but the simple question, when can I sponsor? You can sponsor that afternoon and congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking a lot on when I got this question, why do I want to be an American citizen? And that really stirred up a lot of emotion on me personally, and I'm sure I'm not alone on this. A lot of green card holders, immigrants out there, undocumented people out there, we all want to be American citizens. And I think for some American people who was born here, it's like, huh, why not? We have such a high murder rate. We have such a high jail rate. Oh my gosh, but American, we, there's a lot of reason you want to be an American citizen. For cultural, civil purposes, I am an American. I'm so proud when I travel from vacation and I come into the American line. And when you go through customs and big airports, I'm just so proud when I show my American passport. Mm -hmm. It's just who I am. I'm an American. It's so beautiful to be American. And I think there's something as a mainstream American, you may not feel the way, I mean, I feel. That's the first thing, why we want to become American citizen. The other thing is about visa purposes. As an American citizen, I don't think a born American know how easy it is to travel. So for example, you want to go to Paris, you want to go to Afghanistan, you want to go to Iraq, Iran, China. It's, as an American citizen, it's, it's so easy to get a visa. Of course, it's, it's difficult because between Palestine and Israel, it's, it's, it's not easy. But as an American, the easiest people to get visas is American people, so for visa purposes. This also, if you carry an American passport, it's the privilege of going overseas. I mean, they charge us more because they say, oh, American people, they have money. Let me charge them more to go to a museum. But it's so nice when you show an American passport. And I just am very proud whenever I go anywhere in the world. But more than anything, to be an American, it connotes so many meanings. We went through the immigrant journey. We speak two languages, three languages, and I'm finally not an outlier. I'm an inlier. I am an American. I mean, it's nothing, the joy of finishing my student visa, finishing school, or drop out of school, getting my OPT, and then getting the green card through whatever way. It's difficult nowadays. No criminal records, you know, no tickets, Whew. and then after five years, now it's time that I get to apply for citizenship. And I think that's it's so important, and it, it can express that joy. So when newspaper wrote about, oh, 70 people became a citizen, I always looked at them, the pictures, I mean, what kind of journey they went through. They're very lucky if you have a sister, a brother who sponsored you. Still, that takes 12 to 15 years, and by the time your kids grew up, they may not be able to come. Now they start the journey again. And I'm sorry I drone on and on. Another point I'd like to make to you is I know sometimes it's hard because we have been practicing for so long in this law firm that every question that came, some, we always think fraud. We always think legally, how can I become a citizen? And sometimes we forgot the whole general purpose of what you want to hear. So whatever you want to hear from us, send us an email, call me, call my people, and we'll make sure you hear from us what your feeling is about certain things. Why do we want to be a green card? Why do we become a citizen? Why do we come from the southern border? Why do we came from a northern border? Thank you for watching our video here with attorney Margaret Wong. My name is Stephanie Ayala. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave any questions or comments down below that we can potentially use for future videos. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more information about our law firm, check out our website at imwong.com and feel free to schedule a consultation at 216-566-9908. Thank you.